on screen right now is the app we worked on in the last episode. Now, if we go in and run this application, I'll just add a new record to the collection and I'm just going to type something here. And we've got a custom dialog box now that appears that tells us or tells the user that the collection has been updated and it's click OK to continue. If we click OK, the dialog box goes away. If I type something else, um, dialog box comes back to tell me that the collection has now been updated again. And this is just a functionality I wanted to roll into this particular application. Now, if you look at the dialog box, this is you know, a highly customized interface here. We've got a, a custom color for our, for our border heading. We've got well, our dialog box heading. We've got a, a title to the dialog box, We've got this custom text here an image file, like some, you know, custom branding and you know, border around. And we've got these nice sort of border radiuses that you don't typically, you can't typically do in Power Apps. And we've got a, a button, of course, an interactive button that we can click OK. Now, the other thing too we've done here is that we're preventing the user from clicking anything behind the dialog box. So they can't sort of just ignore this and go, well, I'm just going to keep interacting with the application, which is a pretty important thing to do because we really, at this point, we want the user to click OK or do whatever functionality we want them to do after they, this dialog box has appeared. And in my case, we just want the dialog box to go away and the user can continue to interact with the application. Looks really tricky to do. It's actually really simple. Let me show you how. Okay, so the very first thing we need is we're going to use a HTML text box. Now, this is how we're going to get our really cool styling here. Now, I've already come up with a bit of styling that I like. We're going to use, we're using HTML. And if you're unfamiliar with HTML, well, you're probably going to get a little bit lost here, but I, what I will do, I'll provide the HTML in the comments section below on this video. So you can start with that. And then from there, you can sort of start learning how to do your own sort of styling from that basis. So in here, I'm just going to use the style tag. We need to make use single quotes here because we're actually passing a HTML string to this control and on the outer, on the outer sort of and well, the way we're defining the string is using double quotes. So anything inside of these double quotes, just so we can escape out of that, we use single quotes. All right, I want to define a border. I'm going to make the height of the dialog box 250 pixels and the width. 650 pixels and give it a border radius of eight pixels. And I'm going to define the shadow, which is defined by the property box shadow be four pixels, four pixels, 10 pixels and that's the hex value for the color I want the drop shadow to be. Lastly, the background color for this particular div is just going to be white. I don't want it to be transparent. That's our outer border there. And you can already see our dialog box is starting to take shape. So inside of that first div, we wanted to find the dialog box header section. And we just do that with a second div. And we just nest that inside of the first div. We need to define style again. And now I'm going to give it a padding of eight pixels. Height of 50 pixels. And again, this is just what I've determined how I want my dialog box to look like. You can, you guys can, you know, as a, app developer, you can take, you can build your dialog box to look any way you want. Just set that background color so we can see it to 
that nice green shape. All right, so if we look at this now, this is really starting to take shape. So, of course, we inside of that div, we can give it a name. Maybe make that text a little bit bigger. Nice. And let's change the color to white. And maybe bold it as well. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to have some customizable text. So in here, I'm just going to add a label. Drop that. Close as I can to those edges. I want that text to be centered. Bring that up a bit. Because we want space for the button at the bottom. And in here, I'll just put... Um, now, what were we doing here? We were, we would say we were doing this when the collection was updated. So perfect. Uh, the next thing I need is the button, my OK button. Make that a little smaller and change the X to OK. And yes, I also want to make that green well the last thing i'd like to do is just to have uh my branding on this dialog box just so when people are using the application they understand that it's coming from this app so all i need to do there is add a media Bring this down a bit change the image an image of my choosing all right one of the last things well the last thing we wanted was we need to put uh like a block behind this particular dialog box so when the dialog box is active we don't want the user to be able to click on any of this background because if we see currently this dialog box is sitting there but we can still interact with the form behind behind it and we don't want that we want the dialog box to block everything behind it so that's actually really simple to do all we need to do here is come down and grab a rectangle put that right up to the top of the screen all the way down the bottom change the color of it just to a gray and if we go custom here, we can change the alpha. And I found like about 30 is pretty nice. Now, currently that is sitting in, because that's sitting right at the top of the stack here, we can't click on anything because it's now blocking our dialog box as well. So we just need to move this item down. So let's send it backwards. I want to send it behind all of our dialog box items. So if we run it again, you can see we can't click on anything besides our dialog box. So that's perfect. And you can also see our dialog box is in nice bright colors, but it's not being blocked by that gray sort of alpha in the background. So I find it's really handy. If I grab all of these dialog box components just to group them. So what I did there was I just highlighted all the items that belong to the dialog box, click on the little ellipse and go group. And I'm just going to call that dialog box. So that means that I can address all of those items with one visibility property rather than having to go through each individual control. I can just affect that dialog box group and hide and show that dialog when I need to. So there's really only one thing left to do. We need to set up our trigger for when we want our dialog box to appear on the screen. I'm going to do that with a variable. So let's get that variable set up first. I'm just going to do that on app load. And I'm going to make that 
I'm going to call that drag visible. I'm going to set that to false. Now all I need to do is set our visible property on our dialog box group to equal to that variable and it disappears. But I want this dialog to appear every time we make a change and we update our collection. So on, on our change properties here, we're doing our update. So let's add an extra. And all I want to do here, set that to true. And we want to do that for all of our on changes here. Because we want that dialog box to appear regardless of what property we change. So let's give that a quick test. Change that to fantasy, our dialog box appears. Now, one thing I've got to do is to set our dialog box well, when we click OK, we want our dialog box to disappear and we want to be able to interact with the form again. So let's click go back, click on our button and on press, on select, let's go set visible to false. So we're setting that back to false now and that should make it disappear. I make a change, I click off, our dialog box appears, I click OK, and it disappears. So this is how we do beautiful looking dialog boxes in Power Apps. Hi guys, it's me at the end to remind you to hit the like button if you like this video and to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content on this channel. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.